Okay, guys, we have just finished drama, Elements of Drama Part 1, Elements of Drama Part 2, and now we're into drama Part 3. It is the third and final section of our drama, and you need to go ahead and grab your reading notebook and a pencil in order to write. Now, this is our Elements of Drama that we just finished, or Part 2, and then we have Part 3 that we're doing right here. And I'm going to go ahead and do my bubble map right in the middle. Elements of Drama! Right here. Now, our Elements of Drama include, we have almost everything done. We need to talk about stage directions and props and uh, let's see, the last one is, oh, set. All right, so we are going to go ahead and label those. Let me grab three different colors right here. Our first one is our stage directions. This is the one that I really want you guys to pay attention to for today. This is the important one, this guy right here. So our stage directions, first thing you need to remember about stage directions is that even though they're written into the play, you don't read them out loud. So do not read them out. I'm gonna go outside of my bubble. Shh, don't tell anybody. Read them out loud. Um, the other thing that the stage directions do is that they tell actors where to go and what to do. Okay, where to go and what to do. The other side of that is um, we're going to actually talk about set first, so I'm going to switch this up. So here are our stage directions. Remember, don't read them out loud. They tell the actors where to go and what to do. They're kind of like directions that the writer of the play put in so that anybody who's acting the play can pay attention to them without the, the writer having to be right there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move this up just a wee bit. And right here in this bottom one, I'm going to put down set. When you're doing a set in a play, usually you have to create a set because normally like a stage is just going to have a regular black, uh, like black curtain, black background or red curtained background, something that's just kind of neutral on the back. And in order to help people understand where things are going and what's happening, they have a set. Remember you have setting and this is your set. Basically it is um, built in props or built in setting to tell the background of the story. So if we did a play on, say, Wadney Wapped, we would have probably have a set or a setting and a set set up so that it, it looks like a school in the background, maybe like the picture of a school off in the distance or a playground, something along those lines so that your audience, when they look at it, they don't just see people moving around on a stage. They look at it and they see behind the actors and the actresses what, where they're at and what it looks like. So they have, you know, pretend school up there. Outside of your setting, you are sorry, outside of your set, you also have something called props. Now, your set, those are usually really big pieces that you're not going to be able to move very easily. Your props are tiny pieces that you use or items you use to tell a story. For example, with Wadney Wad, one of the items, one of the props you might have is a, a jacket because you remember Wadney covered his head with his jacket because he didn't want to come out. So that jacket would be considered a prop. Um, 
the sign that you have where uh, Camilla started reading the sign, that sign would also be a prop because it's a small piece that you can move around. The actors and actresses can interact with it. Whereas the school would be your set because it's a very big piece and it's going to be behind the actors and actresses and they're there, but they don't really interact a whole lot with the school backdrop and the background. Okay, please go ahead. Oh, sorry. Let's, we're not quite done. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull you in and we're going to look at this um, lovely, lovely story that we've been going over. So this would be stage directions because it tells us the background of what's going on. It tells us the background of the story. And in fact, if you go through your play, let's see if I can turn the page here. You know, your stage directions right here, they're usually in italics. A lot of times they'll have a parentheses around them. And these stage directions tell you, you know, that the boy and the girl are both smiling, so they're happy. The grandfather's talking specifically to the boy and girl. Um, let's see. These are more stage directions. To himself. And then the hyena, snidely. Snidely would mean like, ugh. Oh my gosh, well, well, well. If it isn't tortoise, they've got this really mean and nasty look on their face. So these are all stage directions, things that are telling the actors how they're supposed to be behaving or acting when they are doing a specific line or set of lines. So hyena is laughing. It looks like that's our only stage direction. Ah, zebra is talking to leopard. Not anybody else, just leopard. Tortoise is talking to zebra, more to zebra, and to tortoise. And we just keep going with our stage directions, okay? So then we have the action returning to the fireside. Not only is this piece our um, stage directions, or sorry, this piece our setting, but it's also our stage directions. It tells us what the setting should look like. So they can be two of the same thing. Oops, it's not focused. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Come on camera. Okay, there we go. So even though the action returns to the fireside, even though this is your setting, it is also going to be included as part of your stage directions because part of your stage directions are telling you where the play needs to take place. Okay, that now is complete, and that is the only bit that we had left for your um, elements of drama. So I hope you guys enjoy reading your play, and I will see you guys next time.